everyone, it's me Helene here, Cabin Fever Crochet in Northeastern Washington State on location. So happy to be here today at the lake on this lovely afternoon and bring you with me and spend some time with all of my fiber friends. Thank you for tuning in today and welcome everyone and those of you who are new here. Well, I thought, you know, since I do the farmer's market, not every week this year, but I'm still part of that. And I also do occasional additional craft artisan fairs. I thought I would show you what my top seller crochet sellers are. And I also do jewelry as well. One is a crochet bracelet. I have tutorials for all of these. So yeah, what I'm going to do is leave the links below for everything mentioned and you are more than welcome to if you do craft fairs to make and sell at your own booth if you like i just only ask that you please give credit back to me the designer for that because there's a lot a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into the whole process from start to finish so i certainly appreciate that back to maybe my youtube channel here at cabin fever crochet all right, so I guess I might as well just show you what I have on my wrist now. These are my beaded crochet bracelets, and it is a longer tutorial, so at some point this is one of those that I want to update and simplify that. It's a fun one, and they work up really quickly, and they make wonderful gifts too, and it's with a button and loop closure, and this is a button... Oh, I cannot think of the dill by dill. Yeah, they're made in Germany, and I got these at a specialty local yarn shop up north, and they also carry fabric and a few beading supplies. And in each tutorial uh, where the, there's more specific type of materials, I list the links for those too. And so this pretty peach one. And then if you do holiday fairs, you can even do them in, in holiday colors. And these are done, this is a mercerized cotton. This is acrylic, which I, I think cotton for this, the mercerized, because it adds strength, resiliency, so it keeps its shape, doesn't stretch out, doesn't fuzz, pill, and it has a really nice texture to that. And it's a chain net type of construction. But this one was such a nice smooth acrylic, and that is more in a number three weight. And then here is uh, some just, Kind of filament nylon sparkly type of yarn that I had but I go over all that and I think this button I got at Hobby Lobby a while ago so those are fun and the people that buy them they they just love them and it just it, things like that come and go and if you do show, shows you know that just depends on the clientele and who comes that particular week so some of these things, like my baseball cap hat, those of you who have been here for a while, you've probably seen it a hundred times already, but I'm going to show it again for those of are new. And this is really one of my top, top best sellers. Oh, and I forgot my bucket hat. Oh, I left that on the table. I just redid that one. And it's shore, as in the lake shore sure thing bucket hat so the link will be below that one does well too it has a self cinch tie and it has a bit of a wavy and then if you pop the brim up it becomes semi brimmed hat and then you can just push it down and you've got a semi semi floppy bucket hat and it fits a variety of sizes because it is adjustable from youth up to adult and then this is my cooler, yeah, warmer, excuse me, warmer weather baseball cap hat with optional ponytail port. So if someone who shorter hair, you're making it for a guy, then you know you can just leave that, omit that part. And this one I worked in Caron cotton cakes, and it the structure is such that. The cap portion is more open, so you get some airflow going. 
and the brim the thickness of it it keeps its shape and the structure and the way that i designed that you don't need any type of stabilizer plastic anything so what makes it nice is it's totally packable if you're going somewhere you know like the lake or wherever you just want to keep an extra little hat in your glove compartment of your car you're going on a trip you can just roll them up and pack them so eat very easily and then this one has worked in lion brand 24 7 cotton which i really like for that as well and sometimes like i'll put a little flower on it and i have a um, tutorial for a cosmos flower that fits really well looks really cute on these hats and and they're quick and easy and then i show you how you can work three different sizes on these from women's small average and then ladies extra large men's average as well Okay, and then I have a more winter cooler weather version without the ponytail port and stitches that are thicker, closer together, comes down lower on your ears and in back to keep your head warm. And those do great at the holiday fairs or if you do a fall show. People really like the more natural or natural fiber blend. So when I do them in wool, they do really well or like a wool acrylic blend those do great and I even did a couple uh, which I didn't mention in the tutorial but I did it in the lion brand scarfy and I find that yarn tends to stretch out a bit and because it is a lighter bulky type like a number five but on the lighter end of that I would definitely go down maybe a couple of hook sizes on that I don't know what it recommends but I, I would go down so that way the hat doesn't wind up being gigantic or stretching out too much. And another one um, that does well in my kind of novelty and accessory items in the playlist is my water or wine bottle or like a coffee thermos bag. And it has a flat bottom and I structure it in a way that fits the shape of many bottles. And it even fits a wine bottle and i tested them all out and it's strong and i go over you with the materials and you can make it as a shoulder strap or a crossbody. i'm into the self cinch ties can you tell yeah but it just adds a little something and that that way it's just a really nice finishing i mean you don't have to have it but that way it gives you more versatility for different size bottles and i put put a couple of metal beads in the bottom too and again i go over all the supplies with you there i have these lip balm key ring holders okay and i include a little organic lip balm and those are really cute and if you don't want to do the metal chain which i kind of thought of this after the fact you could just crochet a chain and then connect a key ring onto that. And those key rings are very inexpensive. I'm sure you could find them on Amazon. And then I have little cup cozies and having a few novelty things on the table here and there that are inexpensive. If kids come, they wanna buy something, they don't have a lot of money or make cute little gifts and they have a bottom on them. They just don't go around, so they have a bottom. So if you are putting a can in there or a water, water bottle, you know, if the can is cold and when it gets hot, they sweat. So if you use the cotton like that, it's going to absorb it. And then the bottom also acts as a coaster. And I did it in a similar way with the flat bottom too. And then what I did for a larger bottle, after the fact, I made some for my neighbor where I just went taller, taller on that pattern. And I did the self cinch tie just like it with this. So, and those make really fun little thank you gifts too. And then onward to the shawls. This is not my own design, but I did change up the border with permission. And I gave you two, I think maybe three, three different ways to do the border on that. And this is the South Bay Chalette. And I don't think that that pattern, the written pattern on lionbrand.com is available anymore. But it's such a fun shawl to make. So as you can see, I am working on another one, hoping to get that finished in time for the market. And I really like working that. This is a super fine thread weight. 
where you have four strands of thread that are not wound, spun, you know, wound together like that. So I've made so many of these and so many of these that hats and everything, I have lost count. It's hard to keep them in stock. They do really well in that bucket hat too. So that's, that's a good one. And I think this one would do really well and it's my dewdrop, Bactus kerchief style shawl, shawlette, you know, and you just wrap it around like that and then kind of bring it up like more like a cowl, fold it over, um, you know, you get the idea, you can have it more drapey, bring it up higher. I kind of wear them as a gaiter sometimes in the winter when I'm walking, still like to get outside. And, but the air is so cold. We are relatively dry climate here as far as the relative humidity. So the air is pretty dry and, and it's sharp. It's sharp and cold and just really bites through. So I'll do that. I still, <laughs> I still have breathability. Sometimes my glasses fog up though, but it really does help. So that way I'm breathing in a little bit more warm, moist air, but I can still breathe through it. Ha ha ha, here's one I almost forgot, and it's a good one too. My back road scarf or scarfette, depending on how long you make it for the guys or the gals, depending on how you style it with or without buttons. I made three of these and they all went boom, boom, boom. So that was very exciting to see. And these surprisingly work up very quickly too. And if you have any of that faux fur fun fur left, it's a great use for it. And then my Whispering Willow. I have Whispering Willow, that's an older video. I have it in a cowl and a wrap. So I have two ways to make it, a few ways to wear it. And I do have a written pattern for that. And that's all included in the pattern. And it works up quickly. It's very open and lacy. You can do it with or without fringe. And two more honorable mention shawls that have done quite well. This is my Lunar Dreams curved half moon shawl I released in 2022. Can be worked with or without fringe. And this year, 2023, is my Daydreams beaded shawl, which can be worked, of course, with or without beads. That blue multi, someone purchased that the second week I had it up. And well, this one I decided to keep for myself. Oh, I sure had fun with this one, both designing and making the Mayflower scarf. First time I had it out in five minutes, the purple one sold. It had fringe on it. The gal loved the color. She was so happy. That was just great. Now, I don't make scarves for resale very often, but when I do, they do tend to sell, and that is both in winter and summer events. Occasionally, I add new things in from time to time as I make them, and it depends how, how long it takes me. Um, because the value of something is typically only what people are willing to pay. For example, my open season market tote bag. It did well. I had a couple more. They all sold. However, compared to the time it took me to make it and what people were willing to pay, did not make sense for me to continue doing so for resale. However, they do make great gifts for yourself or someone else. But, giving you a heads up, it is a pretty long tutorial. Yeah, so I'm winding down on that. I don't know. This, um, I thought this was going to be my last year. and But I am just going to do it maybe once a month at, at this point. And then I'll just have to see next year. It's just kind of when I feel like it, when I'm up to it. When I have enough product. Because I'm just to the point. I just cannot keep cranking things out at that level anymore. It's it's way too taxing and I was starting to feel the burnout bit on crochet and I enjoy crochet too much to let that happen. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this and if you did and like my content and you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And if you would, the thumbs up, the comments, all of that really does help 
connect my channel, get me out there, and if you click the notification bell for future reminders, then you will be sure to see all of my future uploads. All right, well, take good care, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you again soon. All righty, bye for now.